this week on Kentucky Field. There you go. There you go. We've got some sweet beagle music for you. The dogs are running rabbits on our first hunt of 2018. Next, how about a venison recipe everyone will love? Chad has one that's sure to be a favorite. We're gonna go about five minutes aside. They should be perfect. Then we're catching turtles, doing our part to help improve a farm pond. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. Mercy <laughs> Leo! Yeah. Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh, oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. For many Kentuckians, rabbit hunting truly is a family tradition. Let's go to Nelson County, Kentucky and join the Simpson family on a family rabbit hunt. Now, uh, listen, when we're, when we're hunting, we like to stay in line, kind of in line. We don't want to shoot each other, and we'll let the dogs go up this holler here. Hopefully, we'll kill a rabbit or two, but if not, we've got some frozen ones in the refrigerator. <laughs> we'll have you down for dinner some night. We're not going to starve one way or another. No, huh? no. We got the rabbits. Well, we're here in Nelson County with the Simpson family, and this is uh, this is your family farm that you've had for a long time, and this is kind of what you do, right? 1945. 1945. Mm -hmm. What dog you got here? This is Roscoe. Named after the Dukes of Hazard star. Oh, Roscoe, Roscoe yeah, P. Yeah, Coltrane. Roscoe, yeah. oh, Coltrane. All right. And then who you got here? That's Slim. Slim Pickens. Slim Pickens and Roscoe Pico Train. Roscoe <laughs> Pico Train. Before the bad winters hit in the 70s, we didn't want dogs, they slowed us down. We'd kill 35 rabbits in a day. 77 and 78 wiped them almost completely out. They said, all be careful, okay? That's the most important part. That's right. Hey, uh, Gilly and Michael. Yeah. Kick those weeds on that side of the hill, that's the sun side. And if, if a rabbit's up there, he'll be on that side to get the early morning sun. Don't you kick it right there, Chad? Yes, sir. Two times I've run a rabbit out of there over the years. Really? Tickle me deaf one, take off. <laughs> Thank you, that's good. There he goes. <laughs> there he goes. How it goes, how it goes. Well, they're up there. Is he coming this way? Well, that sure didn't take long. Dogs coming by, get ready. They're only about 85, 90 yards up in front of us right now. Dead. Is he dead? There you go. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Way to go, dog. Let the dogs run to him. All right. Can't kill two till you kill one. Good job, dog. <laughs> hey. What? Very first chase turns out one rabbit. That's pretty that? good. Go ahead and go Slim. That's the way. That's the way. Call him, Gilly. Call Slim over there. Here you go, Slim. Here he is. Here, Slim. Here, Slim. Here he comes. Call him. Here you go, Slim. Here he is. There he is. <laughs> look. There. Good job, Roscoe. Good job. Slim. Here he is, Slim. Here he is. Look, look. There he is. Good boy. Good boy, Slim. That's a good boy. Good run. Good run. That's the way. All right, let's get another one. Hey, no matter what that camera says, that rabbit was in a full sprint. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Running right across in front of me. No matter what the camera shows. <laughs> Beauty of rabbit hunting right here. See that stream there? Isn't that pretty? Look at this game trail here. That could be where one of them rabbits are. Could be that, could be a groundhog. But there's something down in there that he's going to stay. 
Oh, there he goes. Hey, rabbit. There goes rabbit. the rabbit right there rabbit. in front of you guys. Be ready, Michael. He's out in front of you, Gilly. Call the dog. Did you see it? I didn't. You see that? You see that double tree I looking do. thing? I do. About five yards back, you got that brush. It yeah. jumped right through there okay. and right into that cedar. Hey, do you want him to go ahead and take the dogs down there to yeah. it? Yeah. Go ahead. Right, go ahead. Take go the dogs down there, Gil. Well, there it comes a little bit. There okay. you go. I'm telling you, that's music right there. That is, that is music right there. You got two dogs, both of them sound very sure that they're on a bunny. They're on a bunny. There it goes, there it goes way up there. He already went through, he went through the gate. Come on, let the dogs running. We got a rabbit up. Oh, dog, here he is. <laughs> here he is. Come on, Roscoe, come on, Slim. There you go, that's it, Roscoe, that's it. Uh-oh. Hard side. There he goes. Right here. Yep. To the left. Hey, Dad, coming your way. Headed, headed toward the campsite. If you want to head to the left, Chad, kind of where that rabbit ran. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then just head up from there. I'll kind of, I'll kind of shoot straight up through here. I'd be glad to go wherever you right. need to go. Oh, oh, there he goes. Let's go, Slim. Here he is. And that is my first rabbit of 2018. Pretty excited about that. So we thought we saw one end right here, and the dogs came up here, but they went up because we yeah. think there's two rabbits there, here. You might, you might be right, but I, I'm not sure. That may very well be the one I saw cut across in front of you a little bit ago. Hey, you know what I always say? You can't get three till you get two. First rabbit of 2018, the week before Thanksgiving. This rabbit here, I'm sure, will be on the dinner table at the Gilly family Thanksgiving. I think he said it would be uh, biscuits and rabbit gravy, which you can't beat that. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Well, Gilly Jr., I appreciate you uh, having us out for your family. Thanks for coming. Rabbit hunt. You know, this early season rabbit hunt, a couple hour hunts, perfect. Got a couple rabbits, jumped a bunch. Oh, yeah. Fun time. I think we may have worn the dogs out as well. Yeah, he, look, <laughs> he looks about like he's had enough. <laughs> Interestingly <laughs> enough, you. Uh, You've actually started a blog site on Facebook for people to come socialize and talk about rabbit hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's called Beagles and Twelve. So are you getting quite a few people coming on there telling their story now and yeah. communicating? Mm -hmm. It's a place where people can go and they can they maybe get dog training help, maybe find a hunting partner, talk about shotguns that are good for rabbit hunting. Mm -hmm. It's just a really good place for people to go communicate and get some information. You know, it's really, really interesting to me to see a family that gets out here and rabbit hunts and enjoys the outdoors like you guys do, because it reminds me a lot of my family. Thank you guys to all the- Yeah, we all appreciate the, you coming out. All the Simpson family, and thanks a lot. Good luck with your page. Well, thank you. Okay, Slim, okay. People ask me all the time, what is your favorite way to eat venison? And for me, it's backstraps and keeping it simple. If you want to try something easy and delicious, give this a try. If you're a deer hunter, you probably enjoy eating the game that you take. What I've got here is a backstrap that was taken off of a doe that we took on Kentucky Field. This is a recipe that I'm going to show you today that is probably my family's favorite way to eat it. Now you're probably saying, well, it's backstrap. Of course it's going to be good. There are several ways to mess up fixing a backstrap. First off, when you harvest your animal, you get the entrails out, removing all of the waste and wash it out really good. The next thing is you wanna to try to get it cooled down. Now, if you're lucky enough that the weather allows, hanging it for a few days is also a really good idea. Just hang it with the head down so that all the blood runs toward the face and away from where you eat the primary spot where most of your meat is located, which is in the back hams and on the back straps. So this back strap is off of a deer that has hung for a few days. You can tell it's not really, really bloody. The next thing you wanna do, like I say, is get this silver seam and clean all this up. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is with a fillet knife. Now, I always like to come in away from the end. That way, I don't have to hold it. If you try to start at the very, very end and get started, 
it's kind of tough. This will hold, hold this for me. So I get there and all I'm doing is angling the knife blade up and I start to pull. And you can take this off in big sheets. And you can see I'm, I'm wasting very, very, very little of the meat. A couple reasons I, I really enjoy eating venison. First off, I like to eat what I harvest. Uh, you don't want to eat, just harvest something and, and not actually eat it. So uh, it'll deer for me and my family. They really, really, really enjoy it. We want to continue taking all the silver off the top. The back side here looks pretty good. Let's go to the bottom. I'm going to do a little cleanup on this too. You, you get some of this kind of stringy stuff here on the ends. You know, that is a little bit of meat right there, but it's, it's got lines of really, really tough stringy stuff in it. I just always remove it. Now, once you've got it to this point right here, half the battle is already over. You can tell I've cut this back strap in half, uh, just doing this so that I can demonstrate it here on this cutting board. What I like to do once I get it to this point right here is I like to butterfly. So I'll roll this over. What I will do is I'll come in about three quarters to an, three quarters of an inch to one inch over off the side, and I'm gonna cut almost through. I'm gonna move over three quarters of an inch, and that is a butterfly steak. You can tell, look at, look how tender and how that meat looks. Now, we're gonna do that a couple more times here. Pretty quick, you can go right down it. Each one of these just look fantastic. Now, once you get the, the amount of steaks that you're gonna want, obviously you'd wanna cut the rest of it up, freeze it if you're not gonna use it. But on, for, this, uh, for this situation, these four steaks here will be really all we need. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. The next thing I do is I'm gonna put them in this Ziploc baggie. And then I'm gonna, I sometimes make a marinade but I'll tell you, it's really, 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 really hard to beat Dale's seasoning. Now myself, I prefer the low sodium blend. At this point in time, it's really simple. I just shake this up real good, so it's kind of thick and it will settle. After it's been shook up, I will put somewhere in the neighborhood of about a quarter of a cup to a half a cup in here. And I'll zip this up and push the air out. Now, if these had come from the freezer, like I want to do with this piece, I would then put these in and then I'll knead them. And I'll do that to kind of break down all that ice that's in there. I'll set them out on the counter for a few hours and then I'll put these in there and I will knead these around until all the meat I can tell is thawed out. Now I do that because I want it to cook fairly evenly. Essentially, get it to this point, 30 minutes to an hour is all this really needs. If you leave it in there longer than that, it really is gonna take away from the flavor of the meat. The last important thing is the grill. We're gonna go out there and get the grill started. We're gonna get it at 375 to 400 degrees, and we're gonna make sure that grill is up to temperature and not going it higher or lower, and it'll maintain that temperature. So we want four, close to 400 degrees, maintain that temperature. So let's go get the grill going. We got about 30 minutes to get hot, and these are going on. Where our grill is up to temperature, it's setting at 400 degrees, and it's been now over 30 minutes, so our marinade is set in. The only thing we need to do is I do put a little bit of Cavendiers on it once it hits the grill. Other than that, five minutes per side, and we're ready to eat. All right, our grill looks perfect. We're setting it at about 400 degrees. It can be a little hotter, and that's okay as well, or just a little bit less, but you really don't want to get much less. The object here is to cook it fast and not leave it on there very long. We're gonna go about five minutes aside. They should be perfect. Now, I like to lay these with the butterfly open part down. And the reason I do that is when I flip it, after I sear this side, it will hold that moisture as, the, as it comes out. And you'll see when I flip it, you'll go, wow, look how, look how juicy those things are. All right, I got my steaks down. We're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this cabin deers on. Really don't need much. Got a little bit of garlic flavor to it, a little bit of pepper. All right, we'll check on them in five minutes. All right, now all we need to do is flip them over 
and you can tell they got beautiful grill marks on them. These are going to be extremely, extremely tender. I'll tell you what, if you uh, if you don't like these, then you don't like beef because it really it really does kind of taste like beef, and the tenderness will be kind of like fillets. Now I like to flip them over this way because what you'll see is all the moisture will puddle and pull in there. And when I go to pick them up, after five more minutes, I'll pick them up this way and take them and it'll keep that moisture in there. Keeps them really, really, really tender. Another shot of this. All right, five more minutes. All right, these are about ready. The number one thing is do not overcook your venison. That holds true for all wild game, but do not overcook it. You're better off to make a cut and to test it than to keep cooking it to make sure it's cooked. We're going to go plate these with some of our favorite vegetables and we're ready. All right, now we've got our back straps here. Obviously we've got uh, some vegetables. I want to show you how tender this is. A lot of people will tell you, oh man, Venison, it's kind of dry, it's a little bit chewy. It's just regular fork. Just a little bit of pressure, cuts right through. Now you can see, it's still a little bit pink in there. If you're a person who likes well done steaks, it's not gonna suit you real well because it, it does, when you overcook it, it, it gets a little bit dry. There's not the fat in this meat that you'd find in beef and that's the reason. So it literally is cut with a fork tender. And man, is it delicious. Give it a try. I'm sure your family will love it. Do you have a pond and you notice some of the geese have been disappearing? Well, the solution to your problem may reside under the water. They used to call me the country boy from the city. Oh, is that right? <laughs> That's a good sized farm pond. <clears throat> this yes, thing could hold. It could hold quite a few turtles, couldn't it? Well, my first line set, I set <clears throat> 10 lines and got six turtles. Wow, out here? Mm-hmm. And those six turtles weighed 126 pounds. Oh my gosh. Had one that was 32 pounds. So the landowner, who obviously knew they had a problem with uh, yes. uh, geese yes. disappearing, yes. probably pretty happy to see that. Yes. I'm interested to see how you put this set out. Obviously, it looks like it's fairly simple, but uh, let's, let's make a set here and tell me a little bit about this location, why you chose this, and then uh, let's talk about the bait. Well, I chose this location because it's uh, the deeper end of the lake. They seem to travel the deeper banks. And then bait-wise, I use beef neck. Okay. Or if I can't find a beef neck, I'll use cut-up beef. Okay and it's a little tougher, it stays on the hook fairly well. Tell me about how a turtle finds this in the water. Do they have a good sense of smell? They have a real good sense of smell, just like any other animal, any really? other predator. So this sets in the water? Yes. <clears throat> and beef neck, I'm guessing, is pretty fatty? Yes. And uh, probably releases? Uh, yes. Almost like an oil slick as it starts kind of going out, and they exactly. taste it? They, and... they, they smell it, and they come up, and they taste it. And... He's like a lot of other predators. Uh, he's looking for an easy meal. <laughs> If you get a bite, chances are, where's that turtle gonna end up? A lot of times they'll come to the bank. Okay. This pond here has a lot of grass and and uh, weeds along the edge. When they find out they can't go anywhere, they will come to the bank and bury themselves in the mud. Okay. I'll cut a wedge. You notched it. I'll notch it. Yeah. And then I'll tie the stake to the bottom. If you tie the stake up higher, a turtle strong enough to pull it out. That takes away his leverage. drive it down till it hits solid mud. Let's talk a little bit about the hook. This hook is something I would see on a limb line or something. It's yes. uh, got a really big eye so that you can run this through and tie it off. Yeah, those are stainless steel. Stainless steel, those okay. Those are, what are they, five aught, six aught? It looks about like a, looks about like a three to five aught, yes. somewhere in that range. All right. And then uh, show me how you do this here. I just take this and just run it through. All right. And I'll take several pieces. Okay. Since these pieces are small. Oh man, that's a treat. 
We want to make it look enticing. Oh, yeah. All right, and that's it. That's, that's a set. It. Go back a couple hours later, come back and check them out, all right? Yes. No, there's nothing on this one. A little bit of the meat left. We're fishing on a uh, on a beef farm, and you're using beef neck I'm for bait. I'm using beef neck for bait, exactly. <laughs> Keeping it all local. Keeping it all local. <laughs> Keeping it all local. Uh, it's empty. Empty, OK. Of course, the fish have taken their toll. This farm uh, owner here is a goose hunter. He was telling you that he physically saw geese getting pulled under. Yes. And he came to you and said, what do you think that is? And you told him. It's turtles. <laughs> you got turtles. <laughs> they didn't know how big until I caught that first big one. <laughs> what is the biggest turtle you caught on this location? 32 pounds. 32 pounds. Yes. Wow. Now, big, that's a big turtle. Big turtle. That, now that's a turtle that, you know, if you don't respect it, can take a couple fingers off. Real easy. <laughs> As a matter of fact, any turtle can take your fingers off. Oh, is that Even right? the small ones. So your next set's right, right in this area? Yes, the next set should be right here. All right. I see the stake. Okay. The line's running back to the bank, so it's a good possibility. All right, so you think possibility. there's a good opportunity here, huh? Yes. All right, let's see what you got. I got an old hook that I made. <laughs> Tools of the trade, huh? He's into the bank. Oh, wow, okay, this thing was way out there, huh? Yes. I need to go down to the bank to get him. Let me hold that up for you, and you walk down there and do what you need to do. He's buried in the mud on me. This set was out there a pretty good ways. It was out. I threw them straight out. And okay. a lot of times like this, when they get hooked, they come straight to the bank. OK. Wow. That is pretty cool. What do you think that turtle right there weighs? In the eight to 10 pound range? Uh, no, this turtle will probably go 12. OK. All right, awesome. You going to remove the hook or just cut the line? How I, cut, I cut the line. OK. It is good because this, this farmer is having some issues. Yes. He needs to have some turtles eradicated. But this turtle is going to go to good use. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I know you really enjoy turtle soup, uh, making turtle soup. Well, I do a lot more with the meat than just turtle soup. Um, just Yeah, just drop it down, work him in. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that, you're right. That turtle is a little heavier than I thought. It's probably at least in the 10, 12 pound range. Hey, well, I guess any time you, you get a turtle, it's a pretty good day, huh? It's a, it's a, it's a good day. <laughs> well, to start things off, the way I look at it, just to be out here is a good day for me. Oh, yeah. Hey, we got up this morning, didn't we? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and most, most people don't recognize that or, <laughs> or make a point to where it came from. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, well, we're all blessed. Yeah, we are. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here's a really nice smallmouth bass to be caught in Pittman Creek. This fish is 17 and a half inches and was caught on light tackle by Paul Smith. Nice job. Here's Kennedy Crouch with a nice four point buck taken in Bath County, Kentucky. Congratulations. Noah Flint started his deer hunting career off right with this nice buck taken in Scott County. This deer was taken with his grandfather's 30-30. Congratulations. Check out this mess of fish that Bella Sowers caught in Waddy, Kentucky. She actually caught a largemouth this day as well. Congratulations. Check out this snapping turtle caught by Olivia Yates. This thing weighed 35 pounds and was caught in Franklinton, Kentucky. Nice job. Check out this trophy flathead catfish caught by Justin Vessels. This fish was caught on a private farm pond in Radcliffe, Kentucky. Nice job. Shannon Weihoff from Grant County took this nice 10 point buck during modern firearm season. Nice job. Check out this beautiful walleye caught by Anna Thibodeau. This fish was 25 inches long and it was caught below Meldal Dam. Nice job. Here we have Mark Murphy that shows he knows how to catch those smallmouth bass while fishing the Green River out of a kayak. Congratulations. 
Savannah Angel got her very first turkey and she took it with a crossbow in Clark County. Congratulations. Do you still have a deer tag for this season? Good news for you. There's still a muzzleloader season. It runs from December the 8th to December the 16th. Good luck. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.